Okay. Let's move on to hopefully a slightly easier one. Language death is not mainstream theatre. It's not mainstream anything. Can you imagine Hollywood taking it on? It's so far outside the mindset of most people that they have difficulty appreciating what the crisis is all about because they are not used to thinking about language as an issue in itself. Somehow we need to change these mindsets. We need to get people thinking about language more explicitly, more intimately, more enthusiastically. Interest in language is certainly there in the general population. You know, most people are fascinated by such topics as where words come from or what the origin of their town's name is or whether their baby's name means anything. They are certainly prepared to infinitum. And language games are often found on radio and television. But a willingness to focus that interest on general issues, a preparedness to take on board the emotion and the drama inherent in the situation of language endangerment is not something that happens much. All right, that one is a lot more reasonable as a piece. Uh, let's see, who do I want to pick on this time? Hanning, would you like to have a go? Um, I don't really follow up. That's okay. Uh, did you perhaps, uh, do you perhaps have like a list of keywords? Did you take down any notes? Um, not really. I just got in and then uh, I have a follow up with that. All oh, right, no worries. That's okay. If you want, you could try a different one later today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Thank fine. You. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see. Reva, would you like to have a go? No, is there anybody I haven't called out yet? Uh, let's see. I think because most people watching this uh, don't have a microphone attached. Maybe they're watching uh, on a mobile or something like that. All right. Well, um, I think I've already called out everybody uh, at least once. So in that case, I might just loop around. Ivy, would you like to have another try? Sorry, William, I just uh, went back home and can I try the next one, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No worries. Well, I think may maybe nobody is prepared for this one. I I'll just cover this one very quickly then uh, in the interest of saving time. So this one was about language death, although interestingly, this particular lecture didn't actually tell us what language death means. If you're wondering, language death means it literally what it sounds like the death of languages how some languages kind of just fade away no uh, people stop speaking it right or people start forgetting parts of a language okay now this one is what we call a critique or a commentary right commentary so basically uh the speaker is giving an opinion or viewpoint on the topic right and so this one is actually very simple in terms of what his view is, right? Uh, generally speaking, it's this idea that people don't really think about language death, right? Or the consequences of losing language, right? So his comment is just this idea that it's not something that we really focus on or concentrate on very much, right? Uh, although he does says, although, right, people do take an interest uh, in some parts of language, right? Uh, like the meaning of names, etc. right? So that's kind of all he really says. He does talk quite a lot. There was a lot of specific detail, but the general idea, his commentary was, he just thinks that modern people don't seem to think or not, not very aware or conscious of this issue of language death, right? Although he doesn't, interestingly, this is one of the very few lectures where they don't really give any suggestions or advice, or they don't really have a very strong bias or critique about it, 
right? It's also very rare that they don't give a definition of what language death is. Most lectures would naturally do this, but maybe because this one is so short, I'm guessing he probably cut like a section out of a longer speech. Yeah. All right, so there you go.